Hello and welcome back to my Wudang Academy channel. So today we go through the basic routines of the Tai Chi Tian and there are basic movements that are very important because as you know in next year we have a Tai Chi seminar and if you want to get used to the to the basic movements where we build up on in the seminar it is a good way now to start practicing. For practice you need a Tai Chi sword which like you see here has a slightly flexible blade because we are also using in uh, like in ancient China uh, they are using flexible blades for for uh, fencing. Uh, it also has one more important part is that the gravity center is closer to the handle and that way we can utilize our own gravity center and actually feel the sword as an extension of our arm. So uh, feeling the natural flow in each movement and your internal co coordination, it is very important that you're actually using a Chinese sword with a slightly flexible blade, a good balancing of the gravity point to make use in these following techniques I'm going to show you. In this video we will talk about the practical application of the methods that we're using for cutting, counting and blocking and I'll, use you, I'll show you three different methods how we can interpret these movements. I will show you the very technical one, a practical one and a more fancy one so you can uh, make your own picture. First, we need to learn about the basic principle of the cutting, okay? We're starting the movement like this here, the body is in 45 degrees, but the, uh, the tip of the blade looks forward and we're also looking at the tip of the blade. Now watch carefully. By stepping 50-50% with our gravity center, we turn the sword like in circular motion and in this routine the sword gets into a vertical line. When the sword gets into a vertical line, it is very important that the sword and the angle of the hand wrist as well as the angle of the elbow. As you're looking here, we're looking at all round angles. This would be wrong because we are not able to support any kind of blow from the opponent. This is correct, this is wrong. Understand? So now watch here. When we're going here, one, you see, the sword is slightly like coming forward and also a very important part is the sword hand. The sword hand is always like this, two fingers up front and this uh, thumb connects with the other two small fingers. Um, it is very important that you learn about the sword hand and the coordination because uh, when a sword beginner learns sword, they mostly look at the sword and probably what they're doing with their feet. But once you master the sword, you get to learn the coordination with hands, feet, uh, the body and the arms and the sword, so you're taking all into account. And the sword hand will teach you where is space for the body to go into when you're using the sword. So make sure that you take a good look at my sword hand and practice the sword hand accordingly. The sword hand is actually the same importance as the sword movements itself. So here, watch it again, the sword hand goes in circular motion and we cut like this by turning the hip, you see. Yeah. And while we turn the hip, you see already what my hand wrist is doing. The hand wrist is extending, it is relaxed and extending because of the hip movement. This is very important because the last movement with the hand wrist is actually the cut. The cut is happening on the first third of the, of the blade and this is what actually makes the cut. Yeah? So make sure you don't leave it out. When you go here, Utilize the hand wrist and utilize the hip movement. One. See? One. Now let's go to the full movement. So first, one, cut, step close and support with the sword hand here, the hand wrist. Now we're going into the lower cut. See here, we step again. One, two and let the hand wrist go further by having the sword accelerated by simply relaxing the hand wrist, as you see here, and stop. So watch it once again in fluid motion. One, two. All right, now take a look at my hip movement. Hip is 45. One, hip turn, two, hip stop together with all other movements. Also what is important to take into account when we are doing this movement that the sword is always in front of our heart as you see here. We have the sword always in front of us because this is the right angle from all sides where you can actually go and block and counter the opponent. So imagine somebody is attacking you directly to the head. You always be able to block 
according uh, from the center and also make sure the sword goes slightly forward so you're needing less pressure in your arm to actually go around the block and start cutting. Okay, so watch here again. One, two, go, always in front of the body. Understand? So follow my movement slowly. So, now I am going to show you the second method, which is actually from a low stance. This is the method you will probably see the most in martial arts schools in Wudangshan. And the thing is, while it's not entirely uh, too practical like the uh, one before, where we go deeper and look into the actually cutting and principles, here we are going into strengthening the low position and utilizing the hip in an explosive manner to utilize a cut. Because when we, when we have a strong position, we also have more strength in the position overall, so the position is more calm, right? When the, when the position is calm, we are also able to use more explosive power. So we are using here the hip, you see, and cut. So this is, this is very important. So this is uh, why we are using here now very low positions. And the positions goes like follows. Before we always stepped in 45 degree angle, but now we step in one line. We starting in Shibu, and from Shibu, we step over into Mabu, Gombo, and step Tinsipu, Mabu, Gombo, step around, and so on, okay? So I will show you uh, step by step, see here. We start here, Shibu position, go, Mabu, Gombo, turn the hip, see here. Now we step around, Tinsipu, Mabu, Combo. You see, I'm utilizing the hip and the wrist to maximize the cut. I often see new students waving around like this, you see. There is no use and there is no actual cut. So uh, try not to make the same mistake. Always make the cut after each step. See here. Shibu. One. Two. One. Two, one, and so on, all right? Let me show you slowly, step by step. In the next movement, we do a very low position and by standing up, we go into a cut. While this is uh, the least practical movement, it is also a variation and interpretation of the SWOT basics. And it can be useful to actually uh, cut from below uh, and intro a feet and then go straight to the face. Also, you can probably uh, wind up the earth while you do that in the process and have the attack uh, not going forward, but only upward. I will show you how I mean that. We go into a low tensipu stance, and then we step and swing through, and by standing up at the end, like this. This way, we have a long swing going from above upward. Understand? Let me show you. Go low, tensipu, and go, step up, cut.
So I hope you enjoyed all three training uh, methods. Uh, they are all valid in Wudang, but online you see a lot of different variations and interpretations. And I think the video gave you a bit of an overview uh, how we use the sword play and why, what is practical and what is not so, what is fancy, what makes it more interesting and how to practice it all. So if you're interested in February joining our sword seminar, you are welcome. Make sure you try to get the sword beforehand and try to practice these basic movements because it will help you out greatly. So thank you for, for watching and we we'll see you soon for more videos. Goodbye.